Now listen, we want to, um, first of all, acknowledge and appreciate our resident DJ, DJ Kermy in the back. Would you appreciate him? I heard, I heard him, I heard him scratching back there. I, I started to get it going, started to get it going. Listen, listen, take, keep standing, keep standing. This Sunday is DJ Kermy's last Sunday with us. Say man. Now, he's welcome to stay and he's welcome to come back anytime, but uh, I've given him the opportunity to make that choice next Sunday. We will start with our brand new musician and worship leader, Miss Jean Witherspoon, will be leading our worship and leading our praise team. So we want to thank God for Kermy. He has been so faithful, so faithful. You're a good brother, a Marine Ura. He's a good man. We thank God for him. Please, when you leave today, just shake his hand. Thank him. For his service, Kermit, you're always welcome here um, with your serial song. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. We love you. We appreciate God for you. Did you guys already take care of that? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get it together. Church, are you ready for the word? Ah, oh, that wasn't very convincing. Are you ready for the word? All right. Let's do this. Stand on your feet if you would and turn in your Bibles. Oh, let's do this first. This is my Bible. God's holy word, I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I will be taught the word today. And I determine not to be a hearer only, but a doer also. Lord, help me to obey your word so that Christ may be glorified in my life. This week, I look to it, to live by it. I thirst for it, to drink of it. Now, repeat this after me. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God, so that the woman of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Now, if you would open your Bibles with me this morning, we welcome those who are joining us on social media, on Facebook and otherwise. We're continuing our teaching on being a church and a people with the 2020 vision. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 20 this morning, if you would. And this morning's message is entitled, Drum Major Instinct. Drum Major Instinct. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. If you've got it, say got it. If you're ready, say go. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Y'all know who that is? The mother of James and John. Came up to him, him being Jesus, with her sons. And kneeling down before him, she asked him for something. In other words, Lord, would you do something for me? Verse 21. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to him, Say that these two sons of mine, James and John, are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Let's just pause for a moment because I'm certain Jesus paused. Listen to his next words. You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that
that I am to drink. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to James, and he's talking to John in the presence of their mama who came on their behalf. <clears throat> they said to him, we are able. You, you, you ever said something? You ever opened your mouth and said something that you don't really know what it means? We are able. He said to them, no, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, that's the other boys, the other disciples, because they were standing by, they were close enough to hear the conversation. When they heard it, the scripture says they were indignant. Y'all know that word. They were indignant, jealous. At the two brothers, but Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Verse 28, underline it, highlight it. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let's pray. God, I don't believe we understand the weightiness of these words. We are not very different than James John, or even the indignant ten. We all want position. We all want title. We all want a place. And it's not even unreasonable that this mother would come on behalf of her sons to try to get an upper hand, a good seat. But God, you are teaching us something here. You're teaching us something about life teaching us something about leadership. You're teaching us something about servanthood. Would you speak to us today? In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I've got 45 minutes to preach this morning. And it's good to be with you. It's good. Sundays are special days. No matter what you might go through during the week, Sundays are special. Would you admit that? Would you agree? It's something special to be with the people of God, to worship God, to laugh, to sing, to pray. But this morning, it's great to be with you. I often miss you when I'm not with you. I think of you when I'm not with you. I pray for you when I'm not with you. And so it's good that we could be together today. Our theme for this year is build. Our theme is to build. Sometimes when you build, you have to tear some stuff up. You're going to build house, you've got to tear up ground, you've got to tear up some piping, you've got to, you've got to tear some stuff up. When you build, you've got to throw some things away. Anybody with me? In our church, God has torn some stuff up, removed some things, 
so that he could do the building the way he wants to do it. Can I preach today? Our goal in this theme is to explore and discover the key essentials to building a church and being a people with a 2020 vision. Pastor Wells, what does that mean? A 2020 vision is the medical standard for good sight and has reasonably become widely used as the cultural metaphor for clear vision. Clear vision, obviously, with our eyes. Clear vision in life. Clear vision for leadership. And more recently, clear vision for his church. And so today, we continue our quest towards greater intimacy with God. Intimacy means closeness. It means, uh, uh, we use that term, intimacy, to see clearer, to see better, to see more profoundly, to, to, to understand better. And so we are on a quest. That's the word we've been using for the past few weeks. We're on a quest toward greater intimacy with God and 2020 clarity of his call on our life and our church. So if you're here for the first time, and I, some of you are, but if you're here for the first time, we welcome you and we invite you to join us on this quest. This uh, a quest is different from just a trip. It's different from just a journey. A quest involves and includes an adventure. Anybody up for an adventure? It includes, it involves investigation. You, you, you stop at various points of interest to investigate various things. And we have decided and we have declared almost each week that we want more. We want what? More. We want more. We want to be closer. And we are open. We said this. Well, at least I said it and you nodded. We are open to God's divine activity in our life and our church. Now, that doesn't always mean what we think it means, but it means that God can do what God wants to do, how God wants to do it, to whomever he wants to do it, and whenever he wants to do it. Easier said than done. Brother reminded me, Pastor, don't you worry. God's got you. I know that. Thank you very much. I'm calling just to remind you, don't worry. God's got it. Listen, can I, can I offer that to you this morning? Don't you what? Worry. God's what? God's got it. And he's got it. And he's got the problem. And he's got the need. And he's got your loved one. He has you. We also said that we're open to entertaining the questions. To entertaining the questions that God has for us and humbly seeking answers to the questions we have for him. See, the quest goes both ways. The quest allows God to ask you questions. But it also affords you the opportunity on the quest to ask God questions. But I said last week, we ask God questions, but we don't question God. Are you with me? Or your child can ask you a question. Mom, can you tell me? Dad, can you tell me why? Such and such and such and such. We can ask questions, but it's a different question when they challenge us. 
we knocked them back into. I mean, we lovingly straightened them out. Amen? So God doesn't mind, Luis, God doesn't mind us asking him questions. He minds when our questions challenge his rights. He minds when our questions challenge his authority. He, he minds when our questions challenge his sovereignty. This year is about asking questions. Asking questions about where am I on this journey? God, what is it that you want me to know? And better than that, God, who is it that I'm not that you want me to be? God, would you expose me? Expose me to me first before you expose my stuff to other people. Would you expose me? Am I talking to anybody this morning? Would you expose my junk to me so that I can take this junk and give it back to you so that you can work on me? Because sometimes when our junk get exposed to other people, they want to judge us. Oh, don't you know y'all have with me? They 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 want to they they want to judge our our behavior, our motives, and, and so forth. And the funny thing about what people do, not any of you all, not, I'm talking about people who are not here today. The, the, the funny thing about people is that they want to judge us when they have their own stuff. And the funny thing about it, they want to judge us because your stuff got found out. But they can judge you because they stuff ain't got found out. Ain't found out yet. Because this is, how, this is how it works. A lie, a lie moves fast. A lie moves fast. Man, it, it, you start a lie, you start a lie here, it'll be in the back of the room before I get there. A lie moves fast. The truth. Sometimes the truth take two steps, <laughs> one step back. <laughs> truth can take a long time, but it will come. It will come. And so God, we are asking questions this year because we want our faith to be strengthened. Let me, let me see if I got anybody here that wants your faith to be strengthened, that you want your faith to be strengthened. You want your faith to be strengthened. Just, I want you to just keep your hand up just for a moment. So I want, you to, I want you to take a mental picture of your hand being in the air when you said to God through Pastor Wells that you want your faith to be strengthened because that, don't put your hands down, don't, don't change it now, don't say, that means testing. Don't put your hand down. God, I want you to strengthen my faith. But what I'm really saying, God, is I want you to test my faith. This year is about faith. This year is about living by faith at a deeper spiritual level. Can I get an amen? See, I believe that God desires that we not be or just be a church or just build a church, but rather that we build and be a community of believers. That we build and that we 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 build something. We we build something that 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 desperately says, God, I want to know you. And and and, and I want to grow in you. And I want to Go where it is you have me to go. I was working with the men during Sunday school. Now, I want all of our men to join us at 930. We're having some really good conversations about manhood. We're being honest and vulnerable about our junk. If you're a man in the room, you must be with us on Sundays at 930. I suggest that the women would join Sister Lolita because I believe you will have some very hard 
very life-changing conversations like the ladies did on yesterday at their breakfast, uh, uh, finding out about unsafe people. Listen, you need to be in these spaces so that God can use these times and use these spaces to grow you and to develop you, to know him more personally, to grow in him more purposefully, and to go and serve him more passionately as we attempt to keep these core, these core values of gospel gather and grow and give at the forefront of our activity in our church and in our lives. Let's not waste time. Let's, let's not waste time petty, bickering, arguing, and dissension over nothing. Can we not waste time? Listen, if an offense has been committed, please let us do what the Bible says. Let us go to that person first. Stop. Stop going to other people. Can we please just do what the Word of God says? Let's not waste time. Let's build a diverse community of new families, of young people, of young adults, of singles, of seniors, of all colors, cultures, and ethnicities. Let's, let's, let's allow God to do what we're expecting him to do. I asked Pastor Raul to be over our Spanish ministry. Why? Why? God, could I believe God would have us to reach our Spanish, Hispanic brothers and sisters? God blessed us with a few of, of you. Thank God for you. So oh God, okay, let's just see. Will you, will you draw them to our fellowship? Let's do it. I'm game. You game, God. I'm game. I believe that God has a vision for this church. In order for this to be done, we must be a people of crazy faith. I'm say it again. In order for God to do big things, we must be a people of crazy faith. No, you're not, you know, I'm talking crazy faith. To believe that God can do the impossible, to believe that God can do the impossible, you've got to believe when you don't see, when you don't understand. Throughout the scripture, when God revealed himself and drew people closer to him, drew closer to men in order to reveal his purposes, in order to reveal his plans, in order to reveal his ways, man's response always required crazy faith. Hey, Abraham, I want you to leave your family, your nation, and I want you to start walking to a place that you don't know. I'm not even going to tell you. Just walk. How many doing that? How many doing that? Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. Uh, just what? Meet my family and just pack up and just start walking? You heard me. What kind of faith is that? Come on, what kind of faith is that? Crazy. Crazy. And then he didn't even obey. No, no, no. Abraham did not obey because little obedience is no obedience. He left his mom. He loved his dad, he loved his siblings, but he took his nephew. I, this ain't even my sermon, but I'm going to preach this. He took his nephew. What was his nephew's name? Lot. And Lot ended up causing Abraham all kinds of trouble. 
when we don't obey fully, we have essentially disobeyed. How about another example? Moses. Moses began to feel himself, began to feel his Hebrew roots while he had his eyeliner on and his Egyptian prints, and he, 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 was, he was fine and he was built, and he, but he began to feel his roots, and he saw an Egyptian uh, uh, mistreating another Hebrew, and he struck him. He was so, so uh, uh, upset, he struck the Egyptian and killed him. And then began to try to go back to the Hebrews to tell them, I'm on your side. They said, dude, get out of here. What you going to do? You going to kill one of us too? Oh, we see you. What did Moses do? Moses ran to the wilderness. How long was he in the wilderness, Sunday school? Forty years. Forty years. That's older than most of you. Or some of you. Not you. Not you. Not you. Not you. <laughs> not you. Happy birthday, Brother Raul. He's getting, ready, he's, getting ready, he's getting ready to turn. He's getting ready to turn. Come on, brother. Come on. I ain't going to even tell him. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. When God calls Moses to the burning bush, God is talking to Moses. God says, who shall I tell them that is being sent back to the Jews? He says, tell them, Jehovah, tell them that I am that I am. And he says, I want you to go. Moses says, hold up, God. I need a little help. Can my brother go? No, 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 Moses. I'm sending you. You're the deliverer. But, 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 God, 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 says, I ain't tripping on that. I want you to go. He says, God, I'll go if my brother can go. He speaks well. Y'all listen to me now. Y'all listen to me. So God says, okay, Moses, I guess you don't trust me. Go on with your brother. Go on with you. Let him speak for you. You know what ended up happening? When they left Egypt and they took the silver and the gold, it was Aaron who led the people into building a golden calf to worship the calf instead of God which caused Moses to come down from Mount Sinai, take the tablets of stone that he had spent days with God with, and smash the idol that his brother. Church, let me tell you. Crazy faith requires us to do the impossible. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. I don't know, I don't know what's going on in your life. I, I don't have an insight track into the details of, of why this message may be of importance to you, but I'm 100% certain because God gave me this message this week and told me this is what I want you to say. Somebody is at a faith point. And I'm not trying to be a, a prophet or I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm prophetically speaking what God has already said. Somebody is at a faith point. I don't know who you are. I don't even want you to raise your hand. But, I'm, but, but you need to take this word this morning as if God were standing before you right now. I'm not claiming to be God, just a mouthpiece. But I need you to know whatever it is, God is expecting you to apply, activate, exercise great faith. I don't know the details of what that might look like. But you need to know, you need to have faith in God because it's impossible to please God without. What is faith, Pastor? What is faith? Faith is believing when you don't see. Mm. Faith is obeying when you don't understand. Faith is giving 
Hallelujah. When you don't have faith is pressing when you don't feel like it. Faith is thinking before you receive it. Faith is trusting when I don't get it. Trusting, I don't understand, but I trust you. I don't like, but I trust you. I don't know, but I trust you. Does this speak to anybody? Does this speak to anybody? Look, new birth, I've been in this place before. And I sense deeply, deep in my spirit, that God is up to something. He's up to something. I've tossed and turned. I believe. Say what you will about me. Who you know me to be. Some good, some bad. And that's okay. But I do know when God is with me. I do know when God is leading. And oftentimes God leads in ways that are outside our common reason. Because that's who he is. He says his way are higher, are not our ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways higher than ours. So it's almost like, pastors, it's almost like if I can figure it out, it probably ain't of God. If I, if, I, if I can understand the path, I can understand what's going on, and I can see the route, I can see the map, I'm probably going, mm-mm, that ain't of God. Because God does things that don't make sense I'll say it again. God does things that don't make sense. You ever did your budget? Anybody ever do, you ever do a budget? A budget for your home? You ever done that? Yeah. You, ever, you, you know, in a budget, is, you know how much money you're going to get, right? Because you, you, you get a check, right? You know how much money is coming in, right? There's some static uh, 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 expenses, right? Things that you know you have to pay, right? On that list, is your giving to the Lord? Thank you. I didn't get it. Uh, let me try that again. Let me try that again. You you know what you're going to get. You know what expenses you have, and on that list is what you're going to give to God. So I'm going to tell you the difference. If on that list is what you believe by faith, you're going to get to God. You look at all your expenses and you go, mm. hey, babe, we ain't got enough. <laughs> Did ever happen? Ever? No, no, no. Everybody got enough? <laughs> mm. This don't add up. It looks like there's more going out than that's coming in. Somebody in the house, somebody in the house, somebody wise would say, just make sure you give to God. By faith, y'all better listen to me. I'm trying to help somebody. Just make sure that God and his work is first. Let me tell you how this works. Let me tell you how this works. You put all of that income on the list. You put all of those subtractions on the list. You put God on the list. The number at the bottom is in red. The number at the bottom says you don't have enough. But when you add God to the equation, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he fixes it. But he takes what is not enough with just a little bit of God first, and he makes that number go away. 
Come on, some of y'all have seen it. You've seen it. You're like, I don't understand. How is this even happening? God's arithmetic is not like ours. I've seen it. Then, then I know folks, I know folks who got plenty. <laughs> they got plenty, baby, on the income list. The outcome don't even come close to the income. But there's no God in it. God has been left out of the equation. And by the second quarter, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it. Every paycheck, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it. Listen, men and women of God, you must demonstrate great, crazy faith to watch God do crazy things in your life. No matter what solution, no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance we may find ourselves in today, whether good or bad, you can trust that God is up to something great. See, the most important key to being a church and to being a people with the 2020 vision is to first understand we need I don't know how any marriage makes it without God. It's almost impossible with God. Am I preaching yet? So how in the world can you make it without him? Let me tell you something. Without God, life is futile. Without God, life is incomprehensible. Without God, life is meaningless. Without God, life is not worth living. Taylor, I don't know. I, 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 I've been walking with the Lord for, for many, many years, and there have been times, there have been days when I have just said, God, please relieve me from my pain, and I'm too scared to take myself out. But if you would do me a favor and just take me out, I'm too chicken. I ain't jumping on no freeways. I don't, I, I don't want the pain. I ain't jumping off no cliffs. I ain't putting no guns to my head. But there have been days. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. There have been days when I said, God, please believe me. But I'm so glad. Woo, I'm so glad that in those moments, God showed up in those moments God says oh you're going through some pain but just know I'm going through it with you just know you are not by yourself and God plus pain is better than pain without God God plus anything is better it's better God plus anything is better than anything Without him, God, do what you will. Take me through whatever. Just don't you leave me. God, just don't leave me. So in order to draw close to him, in order to experience a deeper level of intimacy with him, I must, I must align my priorities, say priorities. I must align 
my purposes, say purposes. I must align my plans, say plans. I must align my pursuits, say pursuits. I must align my passions, say passions. I must align every area of my life with him if I am going to draw close to him. Can I be vulnerable? I've been married for 30 plus years. Me and my wife separated. It was the worst feeling of my life. I made some choices, decisions to fill a void. And since that time, God has shown me that when we make choices and decisions that are not authored or ordained by him, there will be consequences. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us. It doesn't mean we're a bad person. Come on, y'all. It means we make choices and we make decisions that there are consequences to. One of the consequences that I have personally experienced of late is the dark, the darkness of being alone. Some of you understand, some of you can relate to the darkness of being alone. But the Lord has been showing me of late. I've never been a kid like to be alone. When I walked in the house as a child, I turned on the lights, I turned on the TV, because I needed to feel the silence and some noise. Anybody with me? My father, my dad, John W. Wells Sr., was the sweetest man I have ever known. And I get weepy when I think of my father today. I adored that man, and he adored me. That's how I got called Chip on the old block. And I'll never forget my greatest memory with my father was traveling from Detroit to Memphis on that big green train. I don't, I, that, I don't know what they called it, but but we came into into Memphis, and my daddy, my daddy was a um, was a musician uh, and a vaudeville performer, and uh, he used to perform on Bill Street in in Memphis, and so he took me to Bill Street to meet some of his old friends, and his dad had a barber shop, and I was just a little boy at that time, but and my mother told me she was there, but she was not there. She was not there. She said she was on the train. She took the trip. I said you were not there. It was me and my daddy. I remember walking, I, it was like yesterday, I remember him walking, he had big hands like I have big hands, and he used to hold my hand and we walked out, and I was just so, I just love that man to this day. My mother, on the other hand, may she rest in peace, I love her, but she was not my father. She was not like my father. Mama had Five children by the time she was 21, 22. That was the era. She had eight children. I'm number eight. By the time mom got to me, she was tired of kisses. Can I preach here this morning? She was tired of hugging. She ain't have no nice words to say, but go to bed. Get out of my face. 
That's just who she was. The air she came up with. But I was my daddy's boy. I liked him. So I spent a lifetime chasing after her love. And then I married a person who was just like my mother. Come on, I'm being vulnerable here. So I spent a lifetime chasing after her love. So aloneness is really, really hard for me. But God, after chastening, dealt with that decision. Come on now. Brought me back to a place of aloneness. And almost like a stern parent says, now I told you, I have you in this place for a reason. So stop chasing. Stop trying to fill the void and get alone with me. Let me heal. Let me hold. Let me fix. Let me mend. Let me repair. Let me do what I ordained to do in your life from the beginning. Let me nurture. Let me hold your hand. Let me walk with you. He says, and then I'll do things that you never heard of, that you never seen. Let me be your father. <sighs> okay, God, because my behind is so hard. Somebody said a hard head. Oh, y'all know my mom too? My heart, my behind is so, I don't want no more whoopings. You got to be a certain age to know what that means. I don't want no more beatings. God was up to something. I'm going to stop here. I'll pick this up next week. If you find yourself at a crossroad, if you find yourself at a place of discomfort, if you find yourself trying to figure out what God is up to, I want you to pause. I want you to decide to listen to what God is saying. Remove the other voices. God, remove the other voices and do and say to me what you want to say. I'm, 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 I'll, 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 I'll be alone with you to do the work that you want to do on my life. I want to draw closer because I want deeper intimacy with you, God. Lord, will you do it? God, will you do it? Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, there's somebody here who, hmm, who's in this place, who's in this space, and not the space of this address, but in this place on the journey, on the quest. There's so many questions that you want to ask them. And there's so many questions very likely that they want to ask you, God. But God, you have them at this place, in this space, so that you can do your great work 
in their life. God, we will continue to go forward and look at these essentials. But before we can do that, we must understand that it requires great faith. So God, help me to be a man, a woman, a young person, a mother, a father, a husband, a wife of great faith. God, draw me, draw me close to you. Never, never let me go. I need you, God. We need you, God. We bless you. In the mighty, the name of Jesus. While your heads are bowed, remain seated. But let me, let me extend an invitation. Is God in speaking to you? Is God speaking to you in this moment? Maybe through the week, he's been trying to get your attention. And maybe you find yourself in a place, in a space that is unfamiliar to you, or maybe even more importantly, uncomfortable. I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you. You are incredibly special to him. And he has a plan. Oh, no, no, you don't see it. You don't see it. You don't understand it. You don't even like where you are right now, so you couldn't possibly like where you think you're going. But you can trust him. He is in love with you. He says to you, like he said to Israel, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to destroy you, but to give you a hope and a future. And you'll call upon me, and I will answer. And I'll show you great powerful things. Church, that's where we are right now. So if you're here this morning, first of all, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, this is your opportunity to do so. I'm not asking you to stand. not asking you to walk the aisle. But if you are here this morning, you'll say, Pastor Wells, I really ask for Christ to save me. I, I've been a religious person, but I've not really been a Christian. I've not really been saved. I'm asking him to save me. If that's you, I'm not going to tell you to do anything else but slip up your hand, Pastor Elder. Accept Christ as my Savior. Accept Christ. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I'm not a member of this church, but I need a family. I need a church family. I need a community. And I can go to another church. I can go to a big church. I can go to a smaller church. But I feel compelled. I feel led that this is where the Lord would have me. If that's you, would you slip up your hand? Let me see who else. Thank you, God, for what we've done today in obedience to your command. I pray your blessing upon every person that heard the word today. I pray that it will find a resting place in their heart. I pray that your word would not return void to them. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that this week you will minister, that you'll give them hope, and that you'll increase their faith. God, I thank you all that you are doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.